me tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I hope you all are doing well, well, well. And so um, let me give you the title of this really quick. It says sick people need a great physician. It's, it's sick people who need a great physician. And if you see tonight, I came with a bit of, I guess you would consider it a bit of props. I don't know, but I have on this, let me take this away, this hospital gown. And I remember the first time that I did ministry, um, did a ministry event that <laughs> the Lord instructed me to go around town to find a place that sold hospital equipment so I could get a hospital gown. And so I did. And towards the end of the prison that they went, I was able to share about, you know, we come and we look the part. We come and we look like we have it all together. And we come with our religious and our churchy faces, but yet we are still sick. And Jesus said that I didn't come for those who are well. I came for those who are sick. And so I was thinking about all of the things I've seen on social media about the killing of another innocent black man. And I totally get it. I totally understand because guess what? My father is a black man. My brothers are black men. My nephews are black men. A lot of people I love dearly. They are black people. They're black men. And so I totally understand it. But this is an hour where we have to look at the spirit that's behind somebody to see what's really going on. And then you have to look at the news in the media outlets and see how they um, perpetuate cycles of hate and perpetuate cycles of rage. And not that we don't address these issues because we do, but I know my, um, my stance on things. And just because you don't see people speaking out about injustices, because you don't see people speaking about out about things that happen wrong does not mean that they're okay with it. Does not mean that they don't talk about, I talk about a lot of stuff. I, I speak up about a lot of stuff. But I usually speak about it to God first and then he'll give you wisdom and insight on how to respond to it. And so tonight we are praying for sick people who need a great physician. We are praying for sick people who need a great physician in the name of Jesus. And so I have a couple scriptures I'm going to read to you. And then I'm going to be out of here because I truly, truly did not want to come on Facebook Live tonight. But King James, Habakkuk 1 and 5. And let me type this in the comments right, right quick. Habakkuk. H-A-B-B-A-K-U-K-K. 1, 5. It says, Behold ye among the heathen. And regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told to you. I know it seems like, you know, with this coronavirus and COVID-19 and all of this stuff that God must not be around somewhere for some people. And how could this stuff be going on? But even in the midst of all of this, he's going to work a work in our days that we won't even believe it. Even when it's told to us, you'll be like, gosh, surely God can't do that. Surely God is not going to make a way like that, but he will, but he does. Luke 5 and 31 says this, and I like all these scriptures, 5, 31. Jesus answered and said to them, and that's, the, that's what's scrolling right down here. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but it's those who are sick who really need the physician. And so I know we know we, we put on our clothes and we look nice or whatever, but this is what we really look like. We walking around with our hospital gowns on because we real sick in the age where everybody's covering up. Right. Everybody's covering up. So now you have on you have on your mask. Let me fix it this way, this way. You mute it so you're not saying nothing. You're not talking about anything. Then you have on these masks. You have on either this kind of mask. So this is what we really look like. 
or you might have on this kind of mask this is what we look like or you might be somebody who just kind of like kind of like this you got the religious face right here right here and then you have your corner face right here right so we just mask and we just muted people but god says i come for the sick people he come for for people who agenda is to murder and kill people who that spirit of murder comes on them and they want to kill people he comes for the sick people not that we allow people to get away with justice no but he comes for sick people hallelujah matthew 9 and 12 says this when jesus heard that he said to them those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick <laughs> And then Mark 2, 17 says the same thing. When Jesus heard it, he said to them, let me go and see what did he hear. How about that? Let's get this good old Bible real quick. <sighs> hey to everybody that's that's watching and sharing. Share this with your friends. Tell your friends that Jesus has come for, for people who are sick. He ain't coming for the he ain't come for the perfect people. I believe Paul says, I, I'm chief sinner among them, and I could be the first to um testify about that tonight he didn't come for perfect people he perfects us in our walk with him but he didn't come for perfect people so matthew 9 and 12 okay it says and it came to pass let's let's go to nine so lou matthew 9 9 through 12. And as Jesus passed forth from hence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. Hey, prophetess Quindella. <laughs> and Jesus passed forth from hence. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of customs. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And you know, you know, there are times when I really wish I had that, like that just instant obedience. <laughs> He says, follow me. He just gets up and follows him. It says, and he came to pass as Jesus said at meet in the house and behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Like how many people of all walks of life can feel comfortable enough to come and sit down with us and to partake with us and to break bread with us. I remember when I first moved here five years ago, one of my coworkers invited me to go out with her. And I really, really didn't want to go, but I went. And the very first blog post I ever wrote was called Dinner with Sinners. Dinner with Sinners. And he he, he, he ministered me mightily sitting right there amongst them. Because a lot of times we just look at what people do and think they're so bad and they're so different from us. But a lot of times they just sin a little different from what we do. And so some people sin may be obvious and some people sin could just be hidden in your heart. And so I had to really understand that he didn't call us like, you know, some people want to you can't win people to Christ has already saved. <laughs> you can't win people to Christ who already saved. You got to win those who are not to him. Now, how are we going to win them if we're never around them? How are we going to win them if we never witness to them? And sometimes your witness is your life. Sometimes your witness is your is your action. Sometimes your witness is your speech. So how can we win people if we're never around them? We feel like we are too good to be around them. Washington, D.C., the streets of Washington, D.C., <laughs> taught me about ministry and taught me about serving people and taught me about going to what we consider the least of these and witnesses and talking about the goodness of Jesus. Because when you on the streets, people will say, F your Jesus, F your God, F you. I don't care. I want to hear about that. And you got to be resolute and stand flat footed to say, you know what? For God, I live and for God, I die. For this word right here that I believe that I've hidden in my heart that I don't sin against God with. Sometimes I know it in my heart and I still sin against him. This word that we know this word that's in our heart, we have to be able to share that with people. And how else would they know unless, unless we speak it, unless we tell it, unless we share it with them? So Jesus was sitting down with, you know, many publicans and sinners. They came to sit with him. They wanted to be amongst him, right? How many people really want to be amongst us that's not saved? Because I've seen a lot of people, and I know a lot of people, and I, I was like this growing up. I was like, listen, 
If I'm gonna be like all those people that you know go on Sunday and doing whatever they're doing in that church, then I just rather stay here. And you know, I got jobs, so I had more than one job, so I would work on Sundays, or I'd probably be high somewhere on Sundays, or I'd probably be sleeping around somewhere on Sundays. I wasn't thinking about church for sure, but it was like these people came to <laughs> came to Jesus, right? And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why eat if your master were publicans and sinners? And one thing, you know, sometimes people, they don't necessarily come directly to you. They'll go to somebody that's connected to you and start asking all these questions. The best way to know why somebody is doing something is go to the source. Go to them. Because even your best man, even your best girl, even your whoever is close, even your spouse may not know your inner thoughts about every single thing so instead of trying to go ask somebody else about why your pastor doing something or trying to go ask you know the best friend why they friend doing something or why you trying to go ask somebody in ministry about you or on your job about you or, or 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 um you know another co-worker about your boss go to them right they went to the disciples and said listen why is your master eating with publicans and sinners <laughs> and it says but when jesus heard it Nakaya McGee, what up? <laughs> but when Jesus heard it, he said unto them. So sometimes people will go to somebody else about you. And if you're in the vicinity and you can hear it, or maybe you didn't hear it, but you was told what they said. And then you go address it. He says, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. They who are whole don't need a physician. Right. I believe that's why God empowers us when we get together. We don't forsake the facility of God. We go in there. We get all the skills, the tool, the strategy, the prayers, the prayer points, you know, instructions, the downloads from God, the anointing. We get that when we go there in the building, in the church, we're amongst each other. We take it and we go out and use it. We take it and we go out and use it to bring more people in. It's, the Bible says that um, he added to the church daily those who were being saved, right? So that's going to be people that may be sitting on your row. Well, they may not be sitting on your row right now. They may be sitting on your virtual virtual, virtual row, right? That ain't saved, but they still listening. They not saved, but they watching you. They not saved, but they tune into your Facebook lives. They, they watching you, but they won't click on to come into the broadcast. They'll just unmute it so you don't know they showing up. They, they're there. <laughs> they're watching. Right. He says, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice for I not come to call the righteous, but send us to repentance. <laughs> I ain't call the righteous. Listen, you say you sanctify you. Holy Ghost feel hallelujah. Go and win more disciples for me. Go out into the hedges and highways and byways and compel people to come right he said but i call sinners to repentance sinners to repentance and so that's my that's really why i want to come on with you tonight it's not some long it's not something deep it's for those of you who feel like you know what i'm a sinner i'm not in a good place perhaps you slip back from god but he has come for those who are sick, he specifically said this to me tonight. And I was like, oh, oh mm, no, he specifically said there's going to be somebody in a straight, straight jacket that will watch this. <laughs> you all tied up. You all tangled up in a straight jacket. But Jesus has come. He says, I didn't come for the righteous, but sent us to call to repentance. I didn't come for those who are well, but those who are sick, they the ones that need a physician. You may not look like this on the outside. You may not look like this or look like this, but a lot of us are still mass and a lot of people are still muted and a lot of people won't share their stories and they won't talk about what God has done and they won't share the goodness of God. We got to start sharing what the Lord has done in our lives. And that way people can know, you know, if you tell them, hey, I used to do whatever. And somebody's in that same situation right now. They hear you say that. It's like, oh, well, if you did that and you came out, surely I can do this and I can come out. So Jesus didn't come for the whale. He came for the sick, those who need a physician, those who need repentance, who need to repent. 
That's who he's come for. And those of us who have accepted him and received him, believe in our hearts that this is the, the true gospel, the unadulterated word of the Lord, that we go out and we compel people to come. We go out and we share, that we make ourselves available to sit amongst them. Now, I will share this something with you. One of my brothers um, from church, he shared this one day, and it was so good. He talked about Psalms 1. It says, bless it. Let me type this right here. I'm glad you're doing okay, Nakai McGee. Let me take that down. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And he broke it down like this. He said, <laughs> If you start walking with the wicked too long, then you'll start standing with them. You'll get comfortable and you'll start standing with them a little longer. And after a while, after you walk and stood with them, you'll start sitting with them. <laughs> right. So it, it, it's. It's one thing to walk in the counsel of them to listen and take advice and do what they do. But it's another thing for them to come to you and want to sit amongst you because there's something about you. There's something about your life. There's something about your fruit that remains. There's something about what you say. It's something the way you behave that they say, I want to talk to that person. I want to talk to that Quintella more. I, I want to know why she walking around Walmart speaking in another language. I want to know that what Nakia, Nakai McGee is on. I want to know why that Melissa Hathaway has such joy. I want to know that, right? They'll come to you. It's a difference between we going to sinners and taking advice from them and being around them and sitting and standing and, 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 and walking with them versus them wanting to come and be amongst us. I pray tonight in Jesus name that God will allow people to come, to be compelled. Sinners will be compelled to come and sit amongst us, to have conversations with us, to want to talk to us, to want to, you know, embrace what it is that we're talking about or learn from us to do business with us in the name of Jesus. Psalms 1-2 says this, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law do he meditate day and night. I know a lot of people do some meditation. I know they do, but I meditate on this word day and night. I meditate on this word day and night. He says, uh, 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 I think he told Joshua, be strong and courageous. Meditate on this word day and night. I don't even, let me see. Joshua. Hallelujah. Can't find it right. Oh, Joshua 1 8. Let me put it here. It says, The book, this book of the law, shall not depart out my mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Our prophecy haven't come to pass. Are we fulfilling the conditions? <laughs> you know, the word of the Lord that came to you more than one time. Are you fulfilling the conditions? There is a responsibility we have to the words that we hear, to the things that are spoken to us. We have a responsibility. He says, for then, if you uh, meditate on this word day and night, then, and you observe what it's telling you to do, then you shall make your way prosperous. Then you shall have good success. Now, do we know there's a lot of wicked, unrighteous, unsaved people who have good success? Absolutely. There are principles that you follow for wealth and prosperity. You get your mind right. You declare some things. You, you, you change your mindset about stuff. You'll get all of that. But according to this word right here. If you meditate on the word day and night <laughs> and do all that is is asking you to do, then you will make your way prosperous and, and you shall have good success. And success is really determined on your own terms. Some people, you know, money or have an abundance of money, which I believe money or the brow says money answers all things. So it may not be a financial thing that you're looking for. It could be something else that you're looking for. Some it could be relationship 
success for you. It could be physical success for you. It could be emotional or spiritual success for you, but whatever you de define success is, he says, you meditate on this word and you will have it in Jesus name. So I'm going to read these declarations on my first book. And I was like, Lord, I'm not sure why we talking about praying for the school system tonight, but we're going to pray and we're going to believe God for this academic system in Jesus name. And so this is my first book, Praying, Prayers and Devotionals for the Academic System, for the school system. Our two themed scriptures are Psalms, um, I, is, uh, Psalms 24, 6 and Amos 5, 15. Psalms 24, 6 says, this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Amos 5, 15 says, hate evil, love good, establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. So we got Psalms 24, 6, Amos 5, 15, and I think chapter Psalm 91. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is our refuge. He's our place of safety. He is our God and we trust him. Do you realize that? Well, I know some of you realize that, but some of us went to the same stores. Some of us travel the same businesses that a lot of other people travel, and they didn't make it. And so we can take all the precautions we want. We can be as safe as we want. We can be as protected as we want. It says, he alone is our refuge. He alone is our place of safety. He is our God, and we trust him. When I think about, you know, you live wherever you stay, in an apartment, in a house, in a condo, townhouse, wherever you stay, um, basement, apartment, wherever you stay. When people really want to get you, they will get you. You can have the best alarm, all of that, you know, but when people really want to get you, they can get you. It is the protection of God that keeps us. It is the protection of God that keeps us in our wisdom. We know how to, you know, we do things and we put things in place and, you know, we don't go certain places and we just, you know, we, we are wise. But at the end of the night, at the end of the day, it is the protection of God that keeps us. It says he rescue us from every trap and protect us from deadly disease. I am a witness. I know I got this on right now just for. Uh, presentation sake, but I I remember when I had to put this on a couple of years ago when I really was sick in my body unto death, and he protected me through all of that. I hear stories of people who had, um, you know, certain diseases that just came on them and totally wiped them out. Like this could have took my life, but God spared me. And not only did He spare me, but He spared me, and I don't have any type of uh, uh residue of that. I was sick. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. You know what protects us? It's God's promises. That's what protects us. The word that we know, that's what protects us. Don't be afraid of the terrors of the night nor the error that flies in the day. I know there's a lot of stuff going on telling you about how many people die, but he says, listen, don't you be afraid of the terrors of the night nor the error that flies in the day. I don't care what report comes up on the screen. You don't be afraid of that in the name of Jesus. He said, don't dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. So you don't be afraid of catching COVID-19. You don't, you don't be afraid of catching a virus. The Lord God Almighty will protect us in Jesus name. It says, though a thousand will fall at your side. Though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. I remember when there were so many school shootings and so many school shootings and so many school shootings. I would get on every morning and declare that I don't care what's going, in no, what's going on in no other school, but the Lord God Almighty will protect us wherever we go. Whatever building we step in, whatever campus we go on, the Lord God Almighty will protect us. A thousand will fall to our left. And my God, do we mourn with people that mourn? Do we rejoice with people that rejoice? But none of these will not be my portion. It says a thousand will fall to your Side. Ten thousand are dying all around you, Hallelujah! But these evils will not touch you. 
Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, here is the responsibility. If we make the Lord our refuge, if we make the most high our shelter, no evil will conquer us. No plague will come near our homes for he will order his angels to protect us wherever we go. Now, this is not to say that people who passed away that, you know, it wasn't their time to go. That's that's not what I'm saying. But I'm talking about that premature death that want to take us out. He says, I protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras and you will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. I thank God for physicians and doctors. Let me tell you what a physician is. This is what the Marian Dictionary says a physician is. A person skilled in the art of healing. A physician. A person skilled in the art of healing. Specifically, one educated, clinically experienced, and licensed to practice medicine as usually distinguished from surgery. The second definition says one exerting a rem uh, remedial or salutary influence, a physician. So we'll stick to the first one a person skilled in the art of healing. And why I thank God for nurses, happy nurses appreciation week, the same week as teacher appreciation week. Hallelujah. And I thank God for doctors. <laughs> but I don't trust more in them than I trust in, in God. I don't trust more in them than I trust in God. I have to trust God with them. I, I put them in the hands of my God that I trust. Father, I thank you for this surgeon. I thank you for this doctor. I thank you for these people that's working on me. God, you do what you're going to do through them. When I had my surgery and I like weeks later, I had to go back and follow up with Mr. Muhammad. What he tell me, he says, that was God. <laughs> that was God. He 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 uh, he confirmed with me what I already knew. But he wanted me to make sure, hey, I know you thankful to me, but that was God. Trust in God. Trust in God. Trust the God and people. Trust that God going to do what he going to do with people. Don't trust people more than you trust God because he know who really trust him or who just really saying that. I will rescue those who love me. I will protect though. He said, I'll protect you if you trust in me. When you call on me, I will answer. I will be with you in trouble. I will rescue you. And then he says, I'm going to honor you. What type of God we have that not only does he rescue us, not only does he protect us when we trust him, but then he says, I'm going to honor you. I will reward you with a long life and give them my salvation. This salvation we have ain't nothing to boast and brag about. Even on our most righteous days, we nothing but a filthy rag. But I thank God for this borrowed salvation that I have, that he has given it to me. He has loaned it to me because he know I'm going to need it while I'm here. Hallelujah. But when I get there with him, <laughs> I won't need it anymore. And so I'm going to read over these declaration affirmations in this book. Go and continue to pray and lift up a school system. For those of you who may be sick in your mind and your emotions, listen, get you somebody to talk to. Get you somebody that you can counsel with. Get you somebody that can lift you up and check on you. Please don't die in silence. Don't suffer in silence, but get you some help. Philippians 1 and 3 says this, every time someone thinks of me, and this is our declaration, every time someone thinks of me, they will speak well of me and give thanks to God for knowing me. Imagine every time somebody thinks of you, they say, Lord, I thank you for putting this person in my life. Lord, I thank you for putting this man in my life. Lord, I thank you for putting this woman in my life. We don't want to be people where we like, Lord, why in the world did I meet them? No, we're people that people will say, Every time I think of them, I speak well of them and I give thanks to God for knowing them. Proverbs 30 and 20 says, I would never slander a co-worker or from a slander a current or former employer, employee, co-worker or colleague. I will not slander and curse my supervisor, boss, manager, team leader or any other individual God has allowed to work in a leadership position 
above or over me from the past, the present, and the future. And that's Proverbs 30 and 10. So go check that out. A lot of us, he says numbers, I think it's numbers 14, 28. I would do to you what I heard you say, death and life and the power of the tongue. Words kill and words come alive. We have to be careful what we say about people. I know we may not physically be murdering people, but I did a Facebook Live years ago. How did, you know, it's a TV show. It used to be how to get away with murder. How many of us have slandered and killed people with the words that we spoke? Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 7 and 5. I reject the praises of fools today and forevermore. Don't be so flattered when people come and say nice things to you. You got to know what spirit is behind that when they come in to talk to you. Reject the praises of fool. He told me one time, and he's talking about relationship. Um, but he says, no attention is better than the wrong attention. <laughs> no attention <laughs> is better than the wrong attention. No praise is better than the wrong praise. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 7, 21 through 22. I will never eavesdrop on others in Jesus name. You don't have to eavesdrop on people and try to figure out what people are saying to you. If it's meant for you to hear, you will hear. And if it's something that you really need to know, Holy Spirit will tell you. And he will send people that will let you know what's going on. Ecclesiastes 10, 20. I will never make light of a king or those in authority over me. I will not make fun of those in authority, even in the privacy of my own home and bedroom. Dr. Lorinda, hey! I would never make light of a king of those in authority over me. Dr. Lorinda, I have somebody that I may be referring to you for grief counseling. And it's so funny that she comes. It's not even funny, but it's so like God. In John 11, I believe, it talks about when Lazarus Lazarus died and, you know, Martha and Mary was like, if you would have been here, Jesus, you know, he wouldn't have died. And Jesus wept. And I want to encourage you all. This is what he told me earlier today for the ministry that I serve in. For us to grieve well. Grieve well. If you got to cry, cry. If you got to scream, scream, don't hold it in. Grieve well. Grieve well. Dr. Lorinda Jones is a grief coach, a grief counselor. She was on Speak Life maybe a month or two ago. Grieve well. Grieve well. Hallelujah. I wish I had this book. I really wish I had this book. To tell you all the spirits that's attached to the spirit of grief. Hallelujah. Proverbs 31, 26. I speak with wisdom and I give instruction with kindness. This is something I used to say all the time. In the classroom, that's virtually. But I used to like really be thinking, Simone, you should probably be going off right now. But I'm real calm. And I think about this scripture, these declaration is really, it really became you. It will become you. You would give you would speak with wisdom and give instruction with kindness. Even when you have to do a rebuke, you can do that with kindness. And people will be like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for that rebuke. Because you did it with such a grace and kindness. Handle the grief, or the grief will handle you. Proverbs 12, 15. I listen to counsel, and I'm not right in my own eyes. I listen to counsel. And I'm not right in my own eyes. And so that's why you can't be walking in the counsel of ungodly. Because they will surely lead you off. Amos 5.15. I hate evil and I establish justice in the educational gate. The Lord will be gracious unto us. I don't know which sphere of influence God has called you. I don't know which mountain he has called you to move. But I know I'm called to the academic system. And so I speak to that academic system. I speak to that gate and I establish justice in the educational academic gate in Jesus name. Hebrews 13 and 8. I will experience an unexpected encounter with God today 
So nobody will be able to make me deny him in the flesh. There'll be certain things that God will do in your life that you say, you know what? Nobody can make me doubt him. Like I know that he's a healer. I know he would keep you as you walking around with this, with, a, with a disease in your body that could take you out and you just, you know, willy nil. I know he can do it because he did it for me. Isaiah 22 and 22, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I have been granted the key of David. <laughs> Every door that God has shut, no man can open. Every door that God opens, no man has the power to shut. Don't get afraid. Don't get upset and get mad when you feel like people should be giving you a hand up or helping you out or you, you know, you did a favor for them and then they don't return the favor from you. Mm -mm, don't worry about that. The doors that God opened, nobody can stop that. The, the things that maybe somebody that said they was going to help you out didn't do, it wasn't because that you know it wasn't your it, it, it wasn't what God wanted for you but it's because God wanted you to know that he did that because some people will do stuff for you some people will do stuff for you just so you can come back and say look what they did for me no 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 that's why when I pray here and I say no man no woman takes the credit for this this is the lowest doing this is the lowest doing no man or no woman takes the credit for this but this is the lowest doing because I want God to know listen there is no power in what and I can't make anything happen I can't answer these prayers you answer those prayers now you may use us to go and be an answer to somebody else but it's because we prayed to you and you made it happen so the key of david has been granted to you every door that god has shut nobody can open it back up you know you might have made mistakes years down the road things you should have you know probably could have had you in jail or or something on your record that you know people want to keep bringing back up he says i shut that door i I've, I've wiped that clean from you and every door that God's open, when the favor comes to you with people and with man, with God and with man, when there are opportunities that come to you, don't worry about who's trying to stop you. Don't worry about who's trying to uh, uh, keep you from walking in it. Listen, the door that God opens, no man has the power. No power has the power to shed it in Jesus name. Psalms 119, 126. I love everything that's right. And I hate every false way. I love everything that is right. And I hate every false way. And I I encourage you all to get you some declaration affirmations is different. Affirmation, you affirming what you want to see. A declaration is already happening in your life. And so that was a lot of things I'm reading that I've read and I speak out that I don't necessarily see. And I ain't even walking into it, but I keep saying it until it becomes me. I keep saying it until my life lines up with it. I keep saying it until I start putting in the work to make it happen. I love everything that is right. And I hate every false way. Luke 2 and 52 says, I will increase in wisdom. And I will increase in stature. Luke 2 and 52. I will increase in wisdom and I will increase in stature in Jesus name. Psalms 21 through 2. The Lord hears me in the time of trouble. His name defends me. You don't got to try to defend yourself. The name of the Lord is a strong type. The God's name will defend you. His name will go out before you. God sends me help from the sanctuary. And he strengthens me. God will defend you. His name alone will defend you. <laughs> the name of the Lord is a strong tower. So when people want to come and beat you up and uh, his name is a strong tower around you. That's why they can't get to you. <laughs> when people want to shut doors that God has opened to you, that's why they can't get to you. Because a strong tower is around you. <laughs> the words we speak are spirit and life. Amen. Psalms 19, 14. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart are acceptable in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord is my strength and he has redeemed me. Jeremiah. I don't know the exact truth, but it says the heart. <laughs> the one that we, we have this beating in us. The heart is desperately wicked can know it but God the heart is desperately wicked who can know it but God desperately means it's like you seeking after that it's not just like desperate it's desperately like you keep wanting to do evil the heart is desperately wicked who can know it but God then he turns around and say the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are acceptable to the Lord Psalms 51 is like my go-to scripture Lord creating me a clean heart and renew in me a loyal and a right spirit. Hmm. Purge me with hyssop. 
Wash me, make me clean, make me know you, make me rejoice in you again. Hallelujah. Psalms 18, 20. The Lord renews me according to my righteousness. The Lord has recompensed me because of the cleanliness of my hands. He has recompensed me because of the cleanliness of my hands. Psalms 18, 29. I can run through troops and leap over walls. I can run through troops and leap over walls. Psalms 18, 33. The Lord has made my feet like hinds feet and has set me above high places. The Lord continues to teach my hands to war, my fingers to fight. High places would used to be a place of sacrifice to pagan gods. He says that your feet are like high speed and he set you above the wickedness. He set you above the witchcraft. He set you above the warlocks. He set you above the evil that they want to do. He has set you above the high places in Jesus name. Psalms 1830. The Lord is my buckler and shield because I trust in him. See, these are conditions. <laughs> He's our buckler and shield when we trust in him. If you don't trust in him, he can't be your buckler and your shield. When I go back to Psalms 1, it says, don't walk in the counsel of ungodly. Something God told me, I think it was Friday, when uh, President Trump announced, and I haven't even seen it, I just know, right, when he announced that churches could open. And I got a message from somebody that I love dearly. That says, don't you carry your butt back to church? And I said, I'll be right back with you. And I haven't got back with him yet, but God gave me the word. And I'm just going to send it when I send it. But I'm sharing with you guys. Don't take don't take counsel from somebody that don't believe what you believe. Don't take counsel for somebody ain't walking this walk that you walk. Don't take counsel for somebody that don't believe in the, the, the body of Christ. They don't believe in church. They don't believe in getting together. Don't you take counsel. From people who not doing what you're doing. Don't take counsel from people who you know for a fact that the things that you have done is a result of, of where you are now. Don't take counsel from people who don't even believe the way you believe. If you was anti-church pre-COVID, please don't tell people who go and who want to go that they should not go. If you ain't never been, if you've always been against it, don't worry about what somebody else is doing. Don't worry about if they're going to show up or not. Don't take counsel, hallelujah, from people who are not even doing what you're doing. They're not even walking this road with you. Holly, the Bible says that we got to work on our own soul salvation. And so at some point, you got to make decisions and figure out what you're going to listen to and who you're going to listen to and what counsel and what advice you're going to take. Ha! Huh. Hallelujah. We got four more declarations, then I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Psalms 119, 12 through 13. Lord, clean me from my secret faults and keep me from my presumptual sins. Lord, clean me from my secret faults, the things that people don't know about, the things that we don't want to tell anybody about, and keep me, keep us from our presumptuous sins. <laughs> These sins do not have dominion over us. Those things that we really want to do, those things that we got to constantly say, Lord, help me, those things um, <laughs> yeah, run away from ungodly folk for real. Um, keep us from those things that we really want to do that we have to constantly crucify our flesh to every day. What we consider the thorn in our flesh. Hey, let these sins not have dominion over us in Jesus name. Psalms 26. I am anointed. The Lord gives me victory. He gives us victory. And we trust in the name of the Lord. We trust in the Lord and we trust in his name. All the names and the attributes of God, all the things that he does is in his name. It's in his character. Hallelujah. We trust in him. We trust in the name of the Lord. Proverbs 8 and 6. My lips, these lips speak what is right when we open our mouths. Our lips Speak what is right 
when we open up our mouths. In Psalms 24, 6, I am a part of the generation that seeks the Lord and seeks the face of the Lord. We are a part of a generation that seeks the Lord and seeks the face of the Lord. I love all of you tonight in the name of Jesus. And I pray um, that the, the word of the Lord says when his word goes out, it's going to perform that which it was sent. So I know that tonight that his word has went out and it's going to perform that why, which it sent. Um, those of you who may be going through, those of you who feel like you're sick or may be sick emotionally, physically, spiritually, psychologically, mentally, emotionally. Jesus didn't come for those who was well. He's come for those who are sick. And sometimes it's hard for us to admit that we're sick. Sometimes it's hard for us to admit that we're not well. Sometimes it's hard for us to admit that we don't have it all together because we have, you know, we we, we put on this mask. We have, we, we're muted and we have on the mask. You muted your mask and then you have on this, all of this, you have on all this stuff. So nobody can really know what's truly going on with you. But God will place people in your lives that you can be vulnerable. God will place people in your lives that you can trust. God will place people in your lives that you can open up to and break down and cry and do all kinds of things. Cousin! <laughs> what up? How you doing? How you doing? So God will keep us from falling. He will keep us faultless before the Father. He continues to make intercession for us and he did not come for the he didn't come for the whale. He didn't come for the righteous. He come for the ones who smoke a little weed. He comes for the ones who sleep around a little bit. He comes the ones who who murder. He comes for the pedophile. He comes for the rapist. You know, he comes to the one that practices bestiality. And I know, you know, we don't always, you know, want to talk about that. But my God, this is what it says in 1 Corinthians 6, 6 through 9 through 9 through 11. I love this scripture because it helps me so much. It keeps me, you know, not trying to worry about what somebody else does. The Bible says that why are you looking at the speck in somebody else's eye and you got a big old log in yours? Why are we trying to pinpoint what everybody else is doing when we need to be working out our own soul salvation? Why are we trying to say you shouldn't be doing that? And, and do we tell people, you know, do we share the goodness of God? We absolutely do. But to just be kind of like sin detectors. I ain't trying to detect your sin. I'm trying to detect the sin that's in me so I can get it out. <laughs> I ain't no sin spy. I ain't trying to go spy on you to see what you're doing because I'm trying to make sure I can make sure I'm not doing what I'm supposed I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Hallelujah. Cousin, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. This is what it says in 1 Corinthians 6 through 9 through 12, and then I'm gonna go. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, nor fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuse of themselves or mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I've probably been all these things right several times over. He says, and such were some of you. Like he knows what we do. We can fool people, but we serve a God who never sleeps, who never slumbers. He sees all the evil and all the good we do. And some of you are such. And sir, such were some of you, but you are washed and you are sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Lord and by the spirit of our God. So it don't matter what you did. He can change us. A lot of us now, we can say, I got over that hurdle. I'm not where I used to be. So let me help walk you through this process. But it's not because I'm like a spy detector and a sin detector trying to see what you're doing. No, listen, if you sit, we have a great physician. He ain't just a physician. He's the great physician, right? He's not just a, 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 um, a, 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 a dignitary or he's not just a, a, a law enforcement. He's a law giver. 
He's the he's justice. <laughs> His justice is right. Do you know Holy Spirit will talk to people that don't talk to you? Do you know that our enemies are not necessarily God's enemy? Do you know that? <laughs> Do you know people can hold on to unforgiveness to people that God has already for forgave him? He says that when you repent to me, when you confess your sins, um, that he throws them in a sea of forgiveness. Some people have held sin or some people have still holding unforgiveness over you that God don't forgive you just because people don't forgive you just because people don't forget don't you don't you don't you believe that God is like that God is not a man that shall lie God is not like us God is not fickle in his feelings God doesn't go back and forth God doesn't get all emotional his word is his word and he says when I can find nothing else or nobody to swear by I swore by my own name hallelujah so I don't care what you did I don't care what you currently doing. I don't care what you might do tomorrow, right? Confess your sins. Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous will avail much. That's why it behooves us not to want to talk to people. That's why it behooves us not to want to get godly counsel. That's why it behooves us not to want to be around people that are wise who can counsel us and help us and help us come out of whatever we're in. Now we'll tell you now, ministry mentorship, coaching, discipleship, all that, that can be dirty work because we got some dirty stuff, some dirty secrets. But if God gives you the grace to do it, my God, walk with people, walk with people. Don't drop them in the middle. Don't drop them before they get to the end. You walk with them. As long as God gives you the grace and say yes to do it, walk with people through their things, walk with people through their stuff, walk with people through their life. Because guess what? Somebody is walking with us. And if and, and when people, it seems like people not walking with us, God never gives up. He never stops. He says, I will. Walk. What? What does Psalms 23 says? I will. I'm telling y'all, I ain't want to come, but I'm telling you, when you just start doing what God's do, he'll give you a he give you a, a wheel. He'll give you a get right. He'll give you a pump me up. He'll give you a little more energy. The Lord is my shepherd. This is what Psalms 23 says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The reason why he's letting a lot of us walk in the path of righteousness is because of his name, because we didn't declare his name, because I might have spoke his name over our life. He's, he does it for his name's sake. Yea, through our walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for there are with me thy rod and thy staff. Comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint our heads with oil. Our cup run over. He says, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. As you walk in God is walking with you. And not only is he walking with you, but his rod and his staff both, both walking with you. Number six says, surely goodness and mercy. Surely, that's like an assurance. Like this is for real. This is real talk. This is a guarantee. This is something I can take to the bank in cash. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name, yes, Jesus, walk with us. I know Kanye West had a song uh, about Jesus walking with us. That's prior to the salvation we see now. Um, the salvation that he says that he has in the Lord, and nobody can judge if somebody got salvation or not, because we all working this out. So I love the Lord. I love you guys. I am thankful and grateful for this opportunity to come on tonight and share with you guys. I love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Continue to lift up a school, an academic system, a parish, a district, a county, a city, a state. Lift up these government officials, police officers, teachers, nurses, those in the medical profession. Everybody that you can think of, just lift their names up. Your family, your friends, your co-workers, your, your enemies, your foes, the people that you think not saved, the people that you think God is mad at, the people that you mad at, the people that you're not talking to. Lift them up in the name of Jesus Christ. You are so welcome, Dr. Lorinda, and all of you guys to Mish. I love you. Hopefully we can talk soon. Um, Melissa, I hope I did better. Um, <laughs> so I love you guys tonight. Be blessed in Jesus name. Share this with your friends. Invite them to come back on Saturday afternoon, Saturday night at 8 p.m. 
Um, I am resilient summit is two o'clock on Saturday. So I'll be doing something at two. I'll be doing something at five 30 talking about, um, um, trauma with children in the school system with sister Fran. So two, five 30, and then at eight o'clock, we'll be back on with the unmute summit. So, um, catch us live on Sunday. Be blessed in Jesus name.